morning, wherever you are. This is the uh, Monday, January 27, 2014 edition of the AVFM Roundup. Jo uh, my, I'm Dean Esme, Managing Editor of A Voice for Men. Joining me today, as always, is Dr. Tara Palmatier of shrinkformen.com. Say hello, Tara. Hello. Thank you, Dr. T. And, of course, as always, the evil uh, overlord, Paul Elam, publisher of A Voice for Men. Say hi, Paul. Yo. I said say hi, not yo. What's wrong with you? Didn't your mom raise you right? It's a cultural thing. Oh, that's how they talk in Texas, is it? Yeah. No, I, I think I think that's how Rebecca Watson gets asked for coffee dates. We'll go say, yo, baby, yo, baby, yo. Yo, baby. Yo, baby, yo, baby, yo. What's your name? Hey, what's yeah, your what's name, your name? Yo. <laughs> you mighty fly for an atheist lady. <laughs> I can get with you. <laughs> and by the way, we're we're not. This is something I think. Didn't Rebecca Watson? It what? It actually wasn't parody, but it was. But she was saying giving men an earnest instruction on how not to ask a woman for a date. Oh God, do I want to see that? Do I want to hear about it? Uh, <laughs> no, I like Yo Baby Yo a lot better. Okay. Yeah, I I find it gets the women. I find it gets the women. Uh, that, uh, but you got to grab your crotch while you say it. It's really important. Exactly, exactly. Um, and cat call loudly from the streets. Yep, that's that's. I see that every day. Not Rebecca. Rebecca Watson grabs her crotch and does that. Well, no, if she's going to imitate the way that men approach women uh, in a typical I would, fashion. I would pay money not to see that video. <laughs> I don't think so, Rebecca Watson has grabbed a crotch in entire, her entire life. But oh, that's so different there were, all right, we're but, already, we're, we're, like, usually it's the well, end of the really hangout before we, before we devolve into this. Dean, what are we doing today? What are we doing today? I, I don't know because I now have strange images in my head and Involving well, coffee and elevators. Oh, I know, I know. Uh, Wrong part of the anatomy. We're going to discuss a dick today, and not oh, a crotch. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. There we go. Yeah, we're discussing two dicks. Actually, we get two dicks for the price of one today. All right, one one dick we're going to talk about uh, is John Nazarian, who has two types of dick rolled into one. We're also going to talk about the president of the United States and his faithful dog Joe Biden. Um, uh, we've been doing a lot of uh, making a point about conservatives and right-wingers not being our friends. Hey, left-wingers, it's your turn in the uh, target today. Because, uh, <laughs> <geez>. <laughs> But let's start with somebody who's a, a pretty, so far as I can tell, a nonpartisan dickhead, um, who, uh, a nonpartisan cowardly <laughs> private dick. Who Equal was opportunity dick who was invited to come and talk to us just in case there we, we had any confusion or had in any way uh, uh, misattributed uh, a position to him, uh, gotten confused as to what his message was, if he had in any way you know, been treated unfairly by us, he was invited, he did not even respond to the invitation. What a shock. Because um, he's a coward. Um, and a weasel. Um, for anybody who doesn't know, uh, John Azarian is a private detective in California. Hopefully he gets his license suspended too soon as he's part of a grand jury complaint and may well get indicted. Let's hope so. Um, through a long string of events I won't go through on A Voice for Men, um, we actually found out about John Nazarian from the movie Divorce Corp, or from trailers to Divorce Corp, and that subsequently led me to rather spontaneously just search for his name on YouTube, where I found a bunch of little obscure videos he'd made that had really never gotten many views before, and they were really bizarre instructions, but what, what they came down to, it was a section called Divorce Advice, and the very first video was lengthy and detailed uh, instructions on how to make false allegations to get your husband arrested so that you instantly win in a divorce. How to make false accusations of domestic violence, including throwing food on yourself and banging your own head against the door jam. Um, just a total scumbag. Um, we posted about his story and posted his video on A Voice for Men. Um, and you got to really see this thing. 
I mean, if you haven't, we've be, we'll make sure you get a copy on a voice for men. There's a link in the low bar. There is a link in the low bar. We actually hope everybody. Well, we we can't say we hope. We can say that we would not be in the least bit disappointed if every YouTuber reading this grabs a copy of this and mirrors it because John Nazarian has hidden it. He doesn't want people to see it anymore because you actually see there a licensed private detective advising people to file false police reports and commit perjury. That's what you see this guy doing. Um, subsequent to our publishing about it, uh, within a few weeks after we published it, he finally tried to claim that these videos were satire and parody and not to be taken seriously. <laughs> then, which, uh, you know, uh, 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 that was uh, impressive. Satire, huh? Yeah. yeah. Here's very explicit instructions that would work on how to get away with murder, but this is for entertainment purposes only. Yeah, right. Bullshit. You meant it, John. You know you meant it. We don't believe you. No sane person would believe you. But you'd have to see this video to believe it because it's, it's like he's sitting there saying everything men's rights activists have been saying for years about what goes on with false allegations. And he's just blatantly advising people to do this. I, I'm at, I was at a failure for words when I saw it. I really was. One I thing assume. I want to point out, Dean, is that uh, I, I've got to offer a mild correction to part of what you said. You said he was an equal opportunity dick. No, no I, a, I said that. He's a bigoted dick. Uh, no. he, his advice was targeted for women, and the, the name of the video was How to Get Your Husband Thrown Out of the House, which was basically to conjure up a big story about being abused, throw food everywhere, uh, make yourself shed a couple of tears when the police show up and file a false police report, which will result in him in handcuffs going to jail, being stripped of his home and all of his property, and give her a leg up in the divorce. Uh, it's funny for satire, uh, which he did, after we pointed it out and there were complaints filed to the California Licensing Agency for Private Investigators, he then rushed in first to YouTube and put disclaimers all over the video. It's only satire. But then he forgot to retitle it because he put his supposed satire under divorce advice. It, it was advice from a private investigator. That's what it was when it started. That's what it was afterward. Then we called him out on the fact that, uh, hey, John, you put a disclaimer on there saying that it's just satire. Nobody should take you seriously, but it's still listed under divorce advice. So then apparently he figured out, uh, doh. So he pulls the whole thing down. And he's actually dumb enough to think that we're not going to retain copies of this stuff and run it on our own servers at a voice for men, which is what we're doing right now. So again, like Dean said, if you want to mirror it, go to the low bar. You can link to it, download it, and put it right up on your YouTube channel. We'll stry sand this motherfucker into next week. Well, the fact is it becomes a legitimate news item once he pulls it down like that. Uh, he's trying to hide evidence. That's what he's trying to do. And uh, as, opposed, as opposed to manufacturing evidence. That's right. As opposed to manufacturing evidence. <laughs> They are clear instructions on how to manufacture evidence. And, you know, you see him quoted in that movie, Divorce Court. I mean, he's just a slimy weasel. You want to get out of a divorce? Do it my way. Get through a divorce and win? Do it my way. It's easy. Did he have what? bikini babes sitting behind him in these videos? Like the, no. The, the wives, the ex-wives who who he had helped in, uh, in defrauding the government and their husbands? It was yeah. the only thing missing. Mm. Yeah, Polly Perret in a bikini would have been particularly appropriate since uh, he's been helping her with what are obvious fraudulent false allegations against uh, Coyote Shivers. But you can watch the front page of A Voice for Men for more on that. I mean, just what a sleazeball. I don't even well, know what else to, to say about it. let people know that if they decide to go mirror the video or if they just want to watch it, go to the link in the low bar. And there are also links in the news story. Yeah news stories that we published on this that will link you to the whole sordid chain of events involving Polly Perrette and her persecution lead, using the legal system of Francis Shivers uh, in order to, to basically harass him over a 10-year period and get him put in jail. Yeah, I, I have to wonder in. how many men or how many women have hired him based on his advice, how many guys have been falsely arrested, gotten screwed out of their assets, visitation time with their kids, 
Because of this guy. Because of because of this slime bag, and I'm wondering if 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 those men, if they're out there and they're aware of this, would that be grounds for a civil lawsuit against this guy? A, a class action? I mean, how many, how many, well, how many, how many people do you think he's harmed? Although he is obviously symptomatic of a greater problem, um, and there's probably oh, multiple yeah. no John Nazarians out there, I'll say right now. <laughs> there are divorce. There are divorce attorneys who advocate their female clients do this. Okay, so I, I, yep. Uh, yep. I wouldn't be surprised. I just wanted well, to make the point um, that if you're out there and you're listening, and you happen to know that John Nazarian was involved in your divorce. We would love to hear from you. Yep, uh, we absolutely love would. To hear and from I think you. the strategy is important. Uh, I hope that the state of California follows up on the complaints about Nazarian's illegal conduct, which he's soliciting illegal behavior and doing it as a licensed private investigator, which is absolutely forbidden by the code of ethics in that state. I hope he loses his license. You're right, it's a much larger, more global problem than John Nazarian. But I think John Nazarian is a good first step to make an example. Oh, and the people. fact that a guy like him can make a living off of this, has made a cottage industry out of false domestic violence charges? In his case, it's not even a cottage industry. The motherfucker brags about driving a Rolls Royce because he his clients are big celebrities. So they, he gets really big money to fabricate yeah. information. Well, let's just say a really fancy cottage in his case. Yeah. Um, but in general, yeah, it's a, yeah, you could make a living off of this. Isn't it disgusting? Tara's absolutely right. Um, didn't mean to get pedantic there, Tara, but he clearly makes millions doing this. He clearly does, or has made millions. Um, and I tell you what, if we can uh, get a guy like John Nazarian in trouble, by the way, he's been making threats, but that's another topic. Yeah, fuck his threats. What yeah. threats has he made, or are you at, um, not oh, at liberty he's to disclose? About getting his 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 boots dirty uh, in retaliation for all this. Um, uh, most of this is aimed at uh, Francis Shivers, who he imagines is somehow orchestrating. Uh, all the backlash against him for his video and for his the the just absolutely scummy conduct that he portrayed so well in divorce court. But the fact of the matter is, is that once a voice for men stumbled on this information, we didn't give a damn if we were led in that direction by Francis Shivers or not. There's yeah. a whole team of people working on this and we're going to continue. So That's right. muddy them up, Nazarian. Muddy them the fuck up. We don't care. We've been we've got people from the National Coalition for Men and others in the area. Francis Shivers ain't got shit to do with this. In fact, Francis Shivers could ask us to stop, and we'd say no, um, because this is too important. Uh, there's probably thousands of John Nazarians working as private investigators and lawyers all across America. Um, I would just love to get some bags in trouble to make them all afraid, because they should be afraid. Um, a day of reckoning is coming, and I don't mean a violent one. I mean a legal uh, uh, a day of reckoning, um, because this shit can't be allowed to go on forever. It can't be. Um, it, it's hurting children. It's hurting innocent men. It's hurting innocent children. Um, and I don't know. I don't know what else to say. Well, time for the scumbags to face a day of reckoning. There's nothing else to say about it, in my opinion. That's right. That's right, and they will. In the meantime, in an unrelated uh, matter, well, related rather tangentially, let's just say on the subject of uh, false allegations, um, the President of the United States has declared <laughs> that for victims of sexual assault on campus, he's got your back. Um, and of course, through one side of the mouth, he's talking about victims of sexual assault, and then through the other side of the mouth, his mouth, it's women, 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 women. Now, I don't actually know what to make of this, because it is like, uh, according to the president, an estimated one in five women is sexually assaulted in college, which is um, that's low compared to most feminist estimates. Yeah, that's, I was wondering what he missed on that. 
Yeah, only it's supposed five. to be one in four. One in four. One in three. Um, uh, has it, have the some of them even gotten up well, up to one in three? You know, it's like I can hardly go down to my local college uh, without seeing a rape in the cafeteria every day. Uh, if that shit were true, that's what it would be like. I mean, holy cow. Let, let um, me put one thing in context, Dean. In looking at, uh, we did a piece a few months ago in a voice from men uh, that that covered some studies that were done out of the state of Pennsylvania in three major universities, and it covered reported rapes on those campuses. And of course, it does not account. I need to qualify for rapes that are unreported, and we do know that this is a fact that it does happen. Uh, that some rapes go unreported, but based on reported rapes, the number was one in 19,000. Um, so we would have to have something like, I don't know, 20,000 percent of rapes being unreported to, to, to come up near the kind of numbers that even President Obama is talking about. Uh, but just to put it in context, one in 19,000 folks, that's on, on reported rapes, that is the numbers that we have, the best data that we have. And, the, and, the, and then they'll flip that around and say, well, those are just the reported ones, so therefore the vast majority are unreported. There's no basis for that uh, assertion either. I mean, there's basis for asserting that, that, that there's a certain amount that are unreported. There's also basis for the assertion that a certain amount of reports are false. And, yeah, there's full articles we've done on A Voice for Man and that others have done and using really strict and really good academic data, the one in four, one in five figure, it's horseshit. It's horseshit on so many levels, I don't even know where to begin pulling it apart. Um, but it rests on assumptions that just don't make any sense. Oh, and by the way, if you, if you use the same methodology on how many college men get raped, it winds up being something like one in seven. If you use those stupid methodologies that exactly. come up. Exactly. Um, and they don't care about that either. Instead, today, good old Joe Biden, or was it yesterday, our vice president, and I don't know why. Um, I've voted for about as many of Democrats as Republicans in my lifetime, but I've always, for some reason, like with me, Joe Biden has like some sort of reality distortion field where I like him, even when he's saying and doing scummy things. He's like my crazy pervert uncle. I still kind of like him. He's like your like drunk, your drunk uncle Joe, who <laughs> yes, always I says the wrong thing at the at the wrong time. I can't make myself hate him, even when he's saying evil shit. Um, but he's been saying some evil shit. Um, here. Um, uh, here, here's a quote from Vice President Biden. Our daughters, our sisters, our wives, our mothers, our grandfathers have every single right to expect to be free from violence and sexual abuse, no matter what she's wearing, no matter whether she's in a bar, in a dormitory, in the backseat of a car, on a street, drunk or sober. No man has a right to go beyond the word no. Well, thank you, Joe. Before you told me that, I had no idea. I mean, I gotta go and look back now at all those women I obviously raped because I didn't know you don't have sex with a girl who's passed out. I, I'm glad Joe told me. I, oh God, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. Uh, you know, one of the things that it, we have been really given the right a hard time lately, and they deserve it. And certainly, horse shit coming out of the Oval Office is nothing new. It, it's not new now. It wasn't new under Bush or at any president before them, by the way. Uh, uh, lies from politicians are Clinton a staple of American society. Yes, but Clinton. I do want to say, in all fairness, that. I don't believe for a minute that the absolute nonsense, research, supposed research-based nonsense, numbers like one in five, one in four, one in three, this shit is a product of the left where it comes to gender politics. We don't have right-wing politicians coming out telling us that eight out of five women are uh, domestically violated by their husbands. Uh, by the time they're six months into the marriage. Where we get all this is left-wing politicians dealing with information from left-wing academicians that are furthering uh, an agenda of gender hatred. And now, and this is the important part, uh, we can't forget to mention the importance of the relevance of the Dear Colleague letter 
in all of this. Inexcusable. Which instructed all universities that they were to abandon the um, clear and convincing evidence standard in allegations of sexual assault on campuses and to ad adopt the preponderance of evidence and also follow a set of guidelines which ensured that those accused would not be represented competently at star chamber type hearings. They would not be able to question their witness. They would not be able to challenge the veracity of the claims. They would simply show up and say, I didn't do it or I did do it. And then all the evidence provided by the accuser would be weighed and a decision would be made. And of course, as we found out with Judith Grossman, Grossman's uh, son, we found out with Caleb Warner at the University of North Dakota, that it results in young men getting kicked out of college for no reason whatsoever. Well, what Obama is advertising right now, what he's telling the American people in his weekly address, is that we're going to go a lot further than Dear Colleague Letter. And this is in an environment where we're down to less than 40% of college students being male. They're a dwindling, disappearing population. Their rights are being undermined. And the left-wing political parties uh, in this country, the politicians, are coming out with even more draconian measures and more excuses based on rape hysteria to go in and further remove them from the educational environment. Make no mistake about it, this does not come from the right. The right's not doing jack shit about it. They're scared. Uh, they're, they're cowards. They're spineless. They won't stand up to what's going on. But they are not the cause of this problem. They're just simply not a part of the solution. I'll get off my soapbox. No, I'm on your side. They're cowardly about it. There are a few who are brave enough to stand up and say something, but even then they won't make it a major cause. They just won't, which is just like saying, I don't know. I, uh, fine, I'll Godwinize it right now. Um, it's like saying, well, you know, I understand that they're gassing those Jews over there in Germany, and I really don't approve of that. Um, so can we talk about something else? Yes. I mean, seriously, seriously, you don't get points for non-action on this one. Um, if you're not going to forthrightly come out and say, I mean, Republicans historically were the party of civil rights. They were. That's something everybody easily forgets. Republicans were the party of civil rights. They Abraham were, Lincoln. From Abraham Lincoln all the way through the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which only passed because of strong work by a senator named Everett Dirksen, who was the Republican leader in the Senate at the time. Um, without Republicans, that act would never have been established. A whole bunch of, I mean, they were the Civil Rights Party for 100 years. They really were. Um, and they've lost that. They don't stand up for civil rights anymore. Um, and, and let's see, uh, Democrats, what is the actual past history of the Democratic Party going back to the early 1800s when they were founded? They were the party of the working man, and that was their thinking, the working man. Um, that's their roots, and they've abandoned the working man in favor of these privileged white bitches running these women's studies and women's departments, and yes, they'll throw in some black women once in a while to make it look like diversity. Um, and they'll throw in some privileged white bastards to, to make it look like some diversity, too. That's right. Um, I mean, if you ask me, it's... it's, 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 um, it's dumb and dumber or evil and eviler I mean uh, worthless and outright destructive either way it's disgusting and President Obama I'm sorry if you voted for him uh, fine I don't hate you in fact I reluctantly voted for him last time around we won't get into why but I did I wasn't happy doing it I wanted to ha take a shower afterwards and it's his record on men's and boys issue is one of the biggest reasons why um, uh, there is no excuse, if, even if you voted for this president and you go out there and you see some, some, some uh, criticisms of him that aren't fair, you're right, some of the criticisms aren't fair. Every president gets criticisms that aren't fair. That doesn't give you an excuse to give him a pass when he's clearly in the wrong. And motherfucker is clearly in the wrong here. And that's part of the problem, again, and we always have to remember, that as much as we love to bash politicians in this country, that uh, behind every corrupt, lying, scheming politician, there's a corrupt, lying, scheming electorate. 
uh, Obama's fans who were rooting and chanting and wearing no war t-shirts when Obama was was sort of pushing himself on an anti-war platform and anti-big government and pro-transparency have all fallen silent as Obama took office and went pro-war and anti-transparency and started furthering more programs for the US government to spy on the American people. Where are you, uh, old board again Democrats now that uh, believed in Obama bringing change? What Just, happened to you? You've all fallen silent as your warmongering, spying, misandrous president furthers every policy that you claim to, to be supporting him for. Um, and and is busy to be called out. And is busy throwing your brothers and your sons and your husbands under the fucking bus um, well, with hey, relish. He already, he already got his Ivy League, League education, so I guess uh, other other young men doing so, that's their problem. I actually had a dumb motherfucker on my Twitter recently. I, Will Wheaton had said something really stupid, and uh, I responded to him. One of his little sycophant followers said, I don't have any reason to worry about false rape allegations because I'm not rapey. Like, uh you dumbass. You just, I, well, they set out to dumb down the American public, and by God, they succeeded. I'm not rapey. I'm not rapey or creepy. Well, good for you. You get a medal. So unlike the 99% of men out there who clearly are rapey, you're 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 the one good man. You're right? the one good man. Every time. Refer to Allison Tiemann's brilliant article, The Voice for Men, The One Good Man. If you have not read that and you ever want an explanation for male feminist sycophants, uh, that is the definitive word on it. It well, really is. You, just you Google know what? up. I'll uh, link it in the low bar, but uh, I, I just want to say I want to say Google up a voiceformen.com slash the one good man. You will love it. I'll make sure and get it in the low bar. Go on, ahead, Kara. Sorry. On a, oh, no problem. On a micro level, you see this in relationships with with men and and young men and boys who get involved with these professional victim type women who every man they've ever dated has been a jerk or a bastard or a cheat or a dog or a player or abusive, and and instead of these guys thinking. Hmm. What's wrong with her that she attracts all of these allegedly horrible men? Uh, he he thinks I'll show her I'm not like all of those <laughs> other bad men. And then you know he marries her, wakes up, and realizes, uh oh. Oh. And of course, the, 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 you got to understand the translated and, and, version of her claims that every every man she's ever been with turned out to be a jerk. The translated version of that is every man I've ever been with eventually got tired of my entitled bullshit, or or my abuse, or my you know just full on whack a doodleness. Um, that's a clinical term, but it's <laughs> it's, it's the uh, you know it's. Yeah, it's it appeals, and I think it appeals to, I mean, it's it's a vanity thing. It's an ego thing. I'll show you that I'm different. I'll show you that I'm a good guy. And then later on when they wake up and they're sitting in a jail with a false domestic violence allegation because Cray Cray decided she wanted the house and the kids and everything, and she's spiteful, and she, you know, whatever the reason, you know, these guys wake up and realize that for some people there is no good man. That's just a lie that they get you to buy into to manipulate you into becoming a target and a dupe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it works. It does. It's what does. We, we make fun of the white knights, but in point of fact, I suspect nine out of ten men like have a white knight gene. I, 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 like we we almost can't help ourselves. I fell in a relationship like that once back in my twenties. Uh, I was going to save this damsel. I was going to save this damsel. I finally figured out. Oh my God, she's fucking psycho. Yeah. Well, the, here's but, the thing about about women who are constantly in crisis and claim they want to be saved or rescued. They don't really want to be saved. They don't want somebody to fix their problems. They're not looking for a hero. They're not looking for a rescuer. They're looking for an enabler. And when you stop enabling their craziness or their entitlement, then they turn on you. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you're, if you're lucky and you don't enable it from the beginning, they'll probably just lose interest in you and do you a big favor. And label you as one of those jerks, and then find a more sympathetic, manipulatable ear. 
I think that ultimately, though, even though uh, there is really nothing you can, nothing anybody's likely to say about the Obama administration's current uh, strategies, especially from dear colleague onward until this latest, oh my God, nonsense. I will stick to something I've said in private and that I have said in other things. Ultimately, while this president is responsible for every word that comes out of his mouth and he is responsible for every order he signs, ultimately, this bastard got elected, and ultimately, this bastard uh, is following his advisor's advice. Yep. And he is going by the statistics that are shoved in front of his nose, and where are those statistics coming from? In this case, it's obviously we need to be naming those people. <laughs> One of them would be Mary Koss, who I believe is at what the University of Arizona at Phoenix. Yes. Well, okay, um, fine, fine, fine. People are putting these these crazy statistics under his nose, but he's not a stupid man. He's a smart guy. At some point, I mean, you're seeing these these numbers that make it sound like American campuses are Darfur or the Belgian Congo. It's like, do you really think? if that many young women were being sexually assaulted that their parents would be sending them to American universities and colleges? That's, that's crazy. In fact, in well, fact shouldn't that, we be so, calling So why, for... why aren't people, smart people who know better, saying, wait a minute? Like, I think it's all part of the collective denial. The fact is that I don't believe that most people really believe that th this huge percentage of women are being raped when they show up for college orientation, that they're being <laughs> raped during orientation. It's, um, it's freshman heart of darkness orientation. Yes. I think people look at this stuff and they make unconscious decisions about what are and are not acceptable lies uh, to people. If there was uh, anything in truthful in what President o Obama and Joe Biden are furthering and what Mary Koss furthers and, and all these other just morally bankrupt uh, ideologues in what they're furthering. If there was any truth to the matter, the American public would be so alarmed that they would be demanding all girls' schools uh, everywhere. They would not be sending their daughters to college. They would call in the freaking National Guard to campuses to escort young women from one class to the other. People know that this is not the truth, that it's not what's going on, but I think it's just sort of like the wage gap. It's, it's one of those considered acceptable levels of dishonesty where people can all sort of pretend to believe it's true. And we're going to be tough on crime that isn't happening. Yeah. Yes, exactly. It's, or I'll see this line of going, okay, so it's probably not quite that bad, but you know, if it's even sort of that bad, it's a problem. No, shut up. Look at the, what you're really saying. Look around you. You're in college now. Look around. One out of five of these girls is going to get raped before she gets out of here. Bullshit. Bullshit. I just call bullshit. In fact, I'll call it even further. Um, uh, one in five of the, those girls could tell three of her male buddies that, that that guy over there raped him, and her three male buddies would go beat the fuck out of him for her. That's that's more like what reality looks or, like. Or worse, there's that... Uh... I'm blanking on her name. She's a professor now in Switzerland who was arrested when she came to the U.S. Uh, for a psychology conference. Yes, she's a psych professor. Because when she was in college, she made what may have been a false rape allegation. And her buddies went, and they didn't just go beat the man up. They murdered him. That's right. We talked about that in the, on a hangout. I think it was a couple around Christmas, sometime in December. We talked about that in one of late 2013's hangouts. It's deplorable. It's deplorable. And and she's still playing a total hypo agent uh, on it. Uh, you know, I, I didn't do it. They did it. Yeah, fuck you. And I'm a mom. Don't send me to jail, even though I committed a crime. I'm a mom. Golden uterus. Yeah, no kidding. Um, this is this is toxic. Um, I mean, all I'll say on the left-right thing is that you people on the left need to remember that men matter as much as women. Stop buying the lies. Um, the interests of the everyday ordinary man is what the left and the Democrats are supposed to be about. The ordinary, the little guy, that's what they're supposed to be about. And Republicans, you guys are supposed to be the strict ones saying rights are rights and not to be tromped on and violated. You're both failing. The Democrats are failing worse. That doesn't give Republicans a free pass, though. And that's all I'm going to say. No, it's not all I'm going to say. Um, this is just, this is horrendous. This is horrendous. Um, and, and, and the American people are letting it happen. 
without a word. Um, and and where hey, can but, it end? But, hey, but but they're 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 posting a lot of selfies on social media. <laughs> that's that's being monitored by the NSA. <laughs> but that's okay. They're only looking at the bad guys. You know, can, hey, you know, maybe that would be a good program to start for. Uh, College women who are getting raped start treating them to do selfies during the rape. Rapies? That way they'll rapies. rapies. <laughs> hey, look, she's raping me, and then put that up, and then everybody will know what's you really have, happening, you right? Hard on the, you have to go hard on the P though, because it, it might sound like rabies. rabies. So, uh, so say rapies. I'm gonna take my rapey. I mean, it's it, it's it's happening to all of us. All of my girlfriends have been raped, and I haven't been. Um, that's what will happen next, right? Oh, now I'm going into the gutter, but Jesus, dear no, God. Well, you know something? If you want to talk about this subject, you have to go in the gutter. It's like trying to talk about John Nazarian without getting scum on you. It, it just doesn't happen. No, oh, I'll tell you what. Yep. All right, guys. Well, we've been going for 36 minutes. I, I can't think of anything else I want to say on either of these two scumbags. Um, um, what else is there to talk about this week? Well, uh, well, I don't know if you want to wrap up. I've got some final thoughts on both these subjects, but uh, why don't you uh, give us some final thoughts, Paul? Uh, well, my final thoughts, and I hope you two have more. Uh, first, very simply, a, a message for John Nazarian, uh, right there, buddy. There's, uh, there's your message, and I'm done with him now, except for the work we're doing on him. Uh, the no, other thing is I just want to encourage people, if you're one of these people that loves to write your politician, that considers yourself very involved in the political process, whether you're right wing or left wing or, or libertarian, you might want to consider that the, the, whole, the wholesale destruction of civil rights that are going on, particularly against college age men right now, that you go in and look at the Dear Colleague letter, you look at things like what the president is about to do now with his new campaign that they're going to start, which is going to further erode those rights and further erode the presence of young men in college. Think about the implications of what a whole succeeding generation after generation of uneducated young men means to our culture. Think about that with your brain for a little while and consider that despite all your, your desires for a, a woman-friendly society, that this is insanity. And start talking to your elected officials about these problems. If they don't hear about them from the electric, which is why I maintain it's fun to, to bash politicians, uh, politicians, but what we have is a social problem. It's a cultural problem. If politicians start hearing from a lot more people that they don't want uh, due process to be removed from college campuses, that they don't want students to investigate what should be criminal matters investigated by police, all the things that go down the line with this, then they won't do anything about it if they don't hear from you. So if you're one of those people that loves to write these guys because you think they preserve democracy and your way of life and they're promoting freedom, if you are still one of the ones that believes that shit, then please write them. Please make this dialogue a part of, of what you communicate to your elected officials. Because if you want them to do anything about it, the only time they're going to is when they believe that their votes count on it. And right now, Republicans know that their votes are based on a lot of factors, but due process for men isn't one of them. Uh, this is why we don't have a left-right solution. That We don't have a, a right-wing electorate that will call their politicians to task on these problems. And the same thing on the left wing. If you really believe, like some people on the left do, in a truly equalitarian society uh, where everybody is treated equal, at least under the law, then take a look at where it's not happening and say something about it to your elected officials. If this doesn't start uh, happening soon, then we're just going to be here next year and the year after that uh, talking about the same problems coming out of Washington that have no solutions. Well said, Paul. Dr. T, do you have any closing thoughts? No, I do not. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you I always chickens out. <laughs> <laughs> 
I will I will add my support for what Paul said. I, I don't remember which famous left wing hero said it, but it was a left wing hero who said one man's one man's when one one man's uh, freedom is imperiled, all men's are all, everybody's freedom is in peril, and that's true. Um, and I, I will also note that on the front page of A Voice for Men today, we have a an open letter to Vice President Biden uh, called "Male Rapists Are Not Lurking on Every Campus Corner." by Suzanne Fenker, one of our conservative friends. Oh, if you thought we hated conservatives, we don't. We just call them to task, uh, just like we do our left-wing friends. Um, President Obama, uh, I voted for you. I felt dirty doing so, and things like this are why. Fuck you, man. Um, and uh, John Nazarian, uh, you're a coward. You're a liar. You're part of a bigger problem, and fuck you. Um, and that's all I got. So see you all next week. Bye-bye.